In this webinar, we will learn about the characteristics of normal chest x-ray and the x-ray pictures of common neonatal respiratory morbidities. First of all, we will learn about the characteristics of normal chest x-ray. Normal neonatal chest x-ray are shot antero posteriorly while the baby is lying in a supine position. The antero posterior orientation of x-ray is recognized by the prominence of posterior ribs as compared to the anterior ribs and comparatively oblique orientation of clavicles as compared to the PA views. The neonatal ribs are more horizontal as compared to children and adults. Another characteristic finding is the prominent thymus in neonatal chest x-rays. Neonatal cardiothoracic ratios can be up to 0.65 on day 1 and 0.6 on rest of the neonatal period. To check the inflation, we should observe the level of diaphragm. Diaphragm is normally up to 8th rib posteriorly and 6th rib anteriorly such that we can see 7 to 8 posterior intercostal spaces. Posterior intercostal spaces more than 8 qualifies for hyperinflation and less than 7 qualifies for underinflation. The common indication of chest x-ray in the neonates include first to investigate the cause for respiratory distress, second to check the position of endotracheal tubes, umbilical arterial and venous lines and chest tubes. Third, to prove the clinical suspicion of air leak. It is important to remember that in the spectrum of air leak, non-invasive tests like transillumination should be immediately performed to take urgent decisions and one should not wait for x-ray diagnosis in a clinically deteriorating baby. Now, let us discuss the characteristics of hyaline membrane disease on chest x-ray. In a neonate with surfactant deficiency, the alveoli tend to collapse and thus we see under inflation that is less than 7 posterior intercostal spaces on chest x-ray. Additionally, due to the patchy atelectasis, we observe the reticulogranular pattern which you can appreciate in the given x-ray. As more and more alveoli collapse, the x-ray displays ground glass opacity and appears white out. Here in this x-ray, we can appreciate a typical air bronchogram of respiratory distress syndrome which extends beyond the heart borders involving the lung parenchyma. It is important to note that the air bronchogram can be observed against the heart even in the chest x-ray of normal neonates. These x-rays display the typical white out appearance of hyaline membrane disease. One should always interpret finding of x-rays in light of clinical details. For example, similar findings can be expected in a case of hemorrhagic pulmonary edema, a very severe pneumonia leading to acute respiratory distress syndrome pulmonary hypoplasia, etc. A relevant clinical antenatal history and a course of illness will give vital clues for the identification of clinical condition. So, to summarize, the typical x-ray findings of hyaline membrane disease are decreased lung volumes, reticulogranular pattern, ground glass opacification, air bronchograms and white out lungs. Now, let us discuss the chest x-ray findings of pneumonia. The typical findings of pneumonia is patchy alveolar or interstitial infiltrates which lead to non-homogeneous involvement of the lungs. The typical feature of consolidation as seen in children and adults with pneumonia is not generally seen in neonates. In the initial stages of pneumonia, there is no effect on the surfactant metabolism. Therefore, usually the chest x-ray appears to retain normal lung volumes. However, in the advanced stages, as the surfactant gets destroyed by infective process, the chest x-ray may show bilateral more dense involvement of lungs and in extreme cases even appear white out. The typical x-ray of meconium aspiration syndrome shows hyperinflated lung due to ongoing bowel valve like phenomena secondary to the presence of meconium in airways. Due to patchy atelectasis and hyperinflation, the chest x-ray shows fluffy or nodular opacities and hyperlucent areas. Transient tachypnea of newborn manifests due to delayed clearance of amniotic fluid from lungs after birth. 
Therefore, the X-ray chest of transient tachypnea of newborn is expected to show first prominent hilum with streaky shadows, second prominent interlobal fissure visible on right side. In addition to these two findings, there may also be small pleural effusion. You will see the blunting of costophrenic angle if pleural effusion is present. They can also be mild cardiomegaly and normal to increased lung volume. The pneumothorax is diagnosed by the presence of free air in the pleural cavity. The pleural air can be easily differentiated as it is number one hyperlucent that is it appears more dark. Second does not have perihilar markings. Third shift of mediastinum to the opposite side and fourth one can also appreciate the collapsed lung in addition. Lastly, we will learn about the x-ray finding of congenital diaphragmatic hernia. In CDH, the x-ray shows the presence of bowel in the left hemothorax. This has cystic appearance. Due to the presence of bowel in the thoracic cavity, the mediastinum is shifted to the opposite side as seen in the chest x-ray. So, in this webinar, we have learnt the characteristics chest x-ray appearances of the common neonatal pulmonary morbidities which should lead to an early diagnosis and should also help in management decisions. Thank you.